In this lecture, we look at gravitational potential energy. The potential energy between two particles is given by this formula, where u is the potential energy, and it's a function of the separation between the two particles, shown as the magnitude of the vector r. And this is equal to minus g times the product of the two masses of the particles, divided by the separation of the particles. Notice the separation is not squared in this case for the potential energy as opposed to the force. We define the zero of the potential energy at infinite separation so that if we are compare, looking at a system of the earth and a one kilogram mass, we have the earth and if the one kilogram mass is at infinity, u is equal to zero. Then if we bring the mass a little closer, one times 10 to the eighth meters, the potential energy is minus 4 times 10 to the minus 10 to the 6 joules. So that's minus 4 million joules. If we bring it in halfway from that point, now we're at a position of 5 times 10 to the 7th meters, and the potential energy has gotten more negative to minus 8 times 10 to the 6 joules, or 8 million joules. We can move anywhere along uh, along a circular path or by any path to another point where we are still 5 to 10 to the 7th meters away from the Earth and still have a potential energy of minus 8 times 10 to the 6 joules. Potential energy do does not depend on the path taken to get to that point. Finally, let's move it closer. So we, we're now at 1 times 10 to the 7th meters. And there we have a potential energy of minus 40 times 10 to the 6 joules, or, or 40 million joules, difference from, from infinity. And work is equal to the change in the potential energy, or minus the change in potential energy. And that's equal to the change in kinetic energy, which is equal to 1 half mv squared, if we're going taking this 1 kilogram mass that was stationary at infinity and moving it to and see how fast it is moving when it gets to the position near the Earth, if we just let it fall. We have that V is equal to 9,000 meters per second squared if the one kilogram mass fell from infinity to the Earth. The force of gravity is related to the potential energy. The magnitude of the force of gravity is equal to the minus the derivative of potential energy with respect to the separation. Or in other words, it's minus g times the product of the masses divided by the magnitude squared of r. The potential energy of many particles is given by just adding up the, the u's from each pair of particles. Or in other words, for a four particle system, then we have this the quantity shown here. We have minus g times the, the six different possible combinations of these four pairs. Let's look at an example. We'll look at Halley's Comet. This comet's farthest distance from the Sun is 5.3 times 10 to the 12th meters. And its closest approach to the Sun is 8.8 .8 times 10 to the 10th meters. The mass of the comet is 2.2 times 10 to the 14th kilograms whereas the mass of the sun is equal to 1.99 times 10 to the 30th kilograms. What is the change in potential energy from the farthest position of the comet to the closest position? Well, u sub far is equal to minus g times the, two, the product of the two masses divided by the separation of the two, pro, uh, two objects. u near is very similar. It's minus g times the same product of the masses divided by the separation at, at the near point. The change in potential energy is equal to u near minus u far, which if we plug in the formula, we have minus g times the capital M times little m times the, the quantity of 1 over r near minus 1 over r far. Plugging in the numbers, we find that delta u is equal to minus 3.3 times 10 to the 23rd joules. So that's the change in energy from the far position to the
to the near position, the change of potential energy. This potential energy will, will give us kinetic energy, so it's interesting to look at what the, how the, what the velocity is doing. V far, at that point, it's nearly zero. The comet is not moving very fast, so we'll assume it's zero. V near we can find by using one half m times V near squared is equal to this change in potential energy, or the minus this change in potential energy. And that gives us a V near of 54,000 meters per second. So it's moving quite fast.